No scientifically adequate investigation of the UFO problem has been carried out during the entire 22 years that have now passed since the first extensive wave of sightings of unidentified aerial objects in the summer of 1947. Despite continued public interest and despite frequent expressions of public concern, only quite superficial examinations of the steadily growing body of unexplained UFO reports from credible witnesses have been conducted in this country or abroad. The latter point is highly relevant since all evidence now points to the fact that UFO sightings exhibit similar characteristics throughout the world. Charging inadequacy of all past UFO investigations I speak not only from a background of close study of the past investigations, but also from a background of three years of rather detailed personal research involving interviews with over 500 witnesses in selected UFO cases, chiefly in the United States. In my opinion, the UFO problem, far from being the nonsense problem that it has often been labeled by many scientists, constitutes a problem of extraordinary scientific interest. The grave difficulty with essentially all past UFO studies has been that they were either devoid of any substantial scientific content, or else have lost their way amidst the relatively large noise content that tends to obscure the real signal in the UFO reports. The presence of a percentually large number of reports of misidentified natural or technological phenomena, planets, meteors, and aircraft, above all, is not surprising given all the circumstances surrounding the UFO problem. Yet such understandable and usually easily recognized instances of misidentification have all too often been seized upon as a sufficient explanation for all UFO reports, while the residue of far more significant reports, numbering now of order 1000, are ignored. I believe science is in default for having failed to mount any truly adequate studies of this problem, a problem that has aroused such strong and widespread public concern during the past two decades. Unfortunately, the present climate of thinking, above all since release of the latest of a long series of inadequate studies, namely, that conducted under the direction of Dr. Yukondan at the University of Colorado, will make it very difficult to secure any new and more thorough investigations. Yet my own examination of the problem forces me to call for just such new studies. I am enough of a realist to sense that, unless the present AAAS UFO Symposium succeeds in making the scientific community aware of the seriousness of the UFO problem, little immediate response to any call for new investigation is likely to appear. In fact, the overall public and scientific response to the UFO phenomena is itself a matter of substantial scientific interest, above all in its social psychological aspects. Prior to my own investigations, I would never have imagined the widespread reluctance to report an unusual and seemingly inexplicable event, yet that reluctance and the attendant reluctance of scientists to exhibit serious interest in the phenomena in question are quite general. One regrettable result is the fact that the most credible of UFO witnesses are often those most reluctant to come forward with a report of the event they have witnessed. A second regrettable result is that only a very small number of scientists have taken the time and trouble to search out the really puzzling reports that tend to be diluted out by the much larger number of trivial and non-significant UFO reports. The net result is that there still exists no general scientific recognition of the scope and nature of the UFO problem. Within the federal government, official responsibility for UFO investigations has rested with the Air Force since early 1948. Unidentified aerial objects quite naturally fall within the area of Air Force concern, so this assignment of responsibility was basically reasonable. However, once it became clear, early 1949, that UFO reports did not seem to involve advanced aircraft of some hostile foreign power, Air Force interests subsided to relatively low levels, marked, however, by occasional temporary resurgence of interest following large waves of UFO reports, such as that of 1952, or 1957, or 1965. A most unfortunate pattern of press reporting developed by about 1953 in which the Air Force would assert that they had found no evidence of anything defying explanation in terms of present-day science and technology in their growing files of UFO reports. These statements to the public would have done little harm had they not been coupled systematically to press statements asserting that the best scientific facilities available to the United States Air Force had been and were being brought to bear on the UFO question. 
The assurances that substantial scientific competence was involved in Air Force UFO investigations have, I submit, had seriously deleterious scientific effects. Scientists who might otherwise have done enough checking to see that a substantial scientific puzzle lay in the UFO area were misled by these assurances into thinking that capable scientists had already done adequate study and found nothing. My own extensive checks have revealed so slight a total amount of scientific competence in two decades of Air Force-supported investigations that I can only regard the repeated asseverations of solid scientific study of the UFO problem as the single most serious obstacle that the Air Force has put in the way of progress towards elucidation of the matter. I do not believe, let me stress, that this has been part of some top-secret cover-up of extensive investigations by Air Force or security agencies, I have found no substantial basis for accepting that theory of why the Air Force has so long failed to respond appropriately to the many significant and scientifically intriguing UFO reports coming from within its own ranks. Briefly, I see grand foul-up but not grand cover-up. Although numerous instances could be cited where an Air Force spokesman failed to release anything like complete details of UFO reports, and although this has had the regrettable consequence of denying scientists at large even a dim notion of the almost incredible nature of some of the more impressive Air Force-related UFO reports, I still feel that the most grievous fault of 22 years of Air Force handling of the UFO problem has consisted of their repeated public assertions that they had substantial scientific competence on the job close examination of the level of investigation and the level of scientific analysis involved in Project Sign, Project Grudge, and Project Blue Book, reveals that these were viewed scientifically almost meaningless investigations. Even during occasional periods characterized by fairly active investigation of UFO cases, there was still such slight scientific expertise involved that there was never any real chance that the puzzling phenomena encountered in the most significant UFO cases would be elucidated. Furthermore, the panels, consultants, contractual studies, etc., that the Air Force has had working on the UFO problem over the past 22 years have, with essentially no exception, brought almost negligible scientific scrutiny into the picture. Illustrative examples will be given. The Condon Report, released in January 1968, after about two years of Air Force-supported study is, in my opinion, quite inadequate. The sheer bulk of the report and the inclusion of much that can only be viewed as scientific padding cannot conceal from anyone who studies it closely the salient point that it represents an examination of only a tiny fraction of the most puzzling UFO reports of the past two decades and that its level of scientific argumentation is wholly unsatisfactory. Furthermore, of the roughly 90 cases that it specifically confronts, over 30 are conceded to be unexplained. With so large a fraction of unexplained cases out of a sample that is by no means limited only to the truly puzzling cases, but includes an objectionably large number of obviously trivial cases, it is far from clear how Dr. Condon felt justified in concluding that the study indicated that further extensive study of UFOs probably cannot be justified in the expectation that science will be advanced thereby.